what I have for you today is just gives you an overview of the project site um, as it relates to um, the Mission Hospital campus. It's a 36-acre campus with multiple medical office buildings on site that support the physicians who practice at, hosp at the hospital there. And um, as you can see, we don't have a current aerial photo that shows the project that's under construction, so I've dropped just the thing in there to show you where the project site is located. Um, the new building will be connected to the round connection that is currently connecting the two buildings that you see in the upper right-hand corner there of the, the campus. Um, it is a four-story over a basement um, building and the, during the design phase of the uh, project, the design decision was made to have the brace bearing system <clears throat> be part of the exterior of the building rather than in most of our other buildings that we've built to date. We've, the brace frame has been on the interior of the building and, and um, with that design decision came the uh, very complex process of trying to clad that brace frame system and then incorporate it in as part of the design as well with the um, the window system that is set to the inside of the exterior of the building. So uh, it really created a lot of challenges on this project as well as the intricate design of the uh, chapel and then on the other end of the building where there's a radius front, there's um, a lot of complication as it relates to the geometry of the building. These are just some renderings of the building just to give you an idea of the complexity of the skin system on this building. Uh, and the next photos that we're now showing you just kind of let you see where we are in construction today. And um, we have started putting the skin on the building, on the uh, areas of the facade that were pretty typical and where we didn't have a, the flash issues that we're currently facing. Our, we as an organization are, have uh, engaged in the 3D process, the BIM process, late in most of our designs because we're taking 2D design and converting them to 3D products. So. For the last two years, we've been slowly ramping up, and, and, and on our new buildings going forward, where we're just starting design, we've made the commitment to the entire project being done in 3D. On this particular project, um, because of the complexity of the skin, the decision was made by our leadership of our construction division here that we needed to spend the money um, to have Vico do the complex constructability model in order to verify what we've been, you know, we were already through the shop drawing process and they were ready to go to order the metal panels and we actually had them hold because we had float in our schedule. It wasn't on the critical path at the time to give Vico the opportunity to go through their modeling process. And as that process progressed, we quickly uh, were able to see that we had some significant issues that we needed to work through with the design team and um, fabricator of the metal panel system. So um, it was apparent early that we had those problems. And as Akos goes through his presentation, you'll be able to see um, just how those things presented themselves. So at this point, I think that's really all you need to hear from me. Turn it over to Akko. So before um, Akos is um, is walking you all to through the uh, through the model that um, that he is and his team created, 
a little bit of an introduction to uh, the, the concept of a virtual mock-up and, uh, and why it is needed and, and why it can bring so much value. I think that many of you have, uh, have seen this little cartoon and uh, maybe some of you even have it printed out and, and it's uh, sitting in a, on the wall behind you. Um, it is a, a, a good depiction of um, how a good idea um, can be interpreted in different ways, um, having several several ways to uh, to create the drawings, how it was documented, um, and by having those different implement or interpretations, how that can lead to cost overruns of projects. With the uh, virtual mockup, we we target to combine all those interpretations. Um, that way we can analyze uh, where the differences are between those interpretations and, um, and find problems between those in, um, in a timely manner without causing any additional cost for the project. Of course, the, uh, the, the physical mock-up, another uh, approach to, uh, to confirming that something will fit in, um, in reality so that the design can be translated in, in the real building. Um, the physical mock-up is, is built for the same purpose. Um, however, it is um, it's really hard to update it once the design changes and, uh, and it needs to be reflected and you need to test it again. Um, also, it is a lot less expensive to build a, a mock-up in the computer and what it is to, to build a skill one-on-one -on -one, uh, sample of the building on site. So what is the difference between a, a construction model and a, and a virtual mock-up? Um, to explain that, I'm, I'm using um, an, uh, a painting of a person that we Dutch are very proud of. Uh, to illustrate what, what the difference is, uh, Jan van Eyck was, uh, was known for his, uh, his high level of attention for, for details that he put into his drawings and that is uh, illustrated by this, uh, this portrait that he created. I think we all know that the devil is in the details and in order to find the problems, uh, you need to go to a higher level of detail, uh, just like Jan did in, uh, in his paintings. Um, although that may not be too positive for the people in the mirror over here. So the difference between a uh, construction model and a virtual mock-up, to the left we see the, uh, the virtual construction model that is, um, that is built with the uh, normal level of detail. And to the right, as we zoom in, just like we did with, uh, with the painting, uh, we see that we go to the actual uh, fabrication component level um, of elements with which that building will be assembled. And that will help us to understand how everything fits together and where possible problems may be expected. Now, Akos uh, will showcase today the, um, the virtual mock-up that, um, that he and his team built and, uh, and how this concept of uh, virtual mock-up was, uh, was used by uh, St. Joe's and the St. Joe project team. So with that, I will give it back to Akos so he can present his work.